guys and welcome to the show. As you can see, we're still here at Knowledge Fest and as I promised when you watched part two of our showroom tour, that little match thing, the little cool amplifier. Well, today we have Jason Digos. You remember him from the show. This is it. This is five channels of love. Today we're gonna learn a little bit about this and then we're gonna hop into this guy right here, this Mercedes, take a little listen and see what's going on. But first, let's learn about it. Stay tuned. What am I looking at? So this is the M5 DSP Mark II by Match from Audio Tech Fisher. This is a five channel amplifier with a full blown DSP. It's a seven channel DSP made by Audio Tech Fisher in Germany. You said seven channels? Seven channel DSP. So is that for the output to a subwoofer or it's, another amplifier? It's another amplifier. It's two channels that are controlled by the DSP that you can go out to. So you can route that channel and make it do anything that you want it to. Some of the really cool things about this is it uses a new advanced coprocessor platform from Audio Tech Fisher. So that means is it gives us up mixing real center algorithm. You guys know the up mixer on the DSP Mini that we constantly like and you guys always ask about. The other really cool algorithm which I really like is called bass augmentation. What that does is it allows us to dynamically adjust the low frequency with volume. You know when you're listening to your system and you turn the volume down and then the bass kind of goes away, kind of get sad faced? Yeah. With this, the DSP can actually boost that low frequency just a little bit. So even at a low volume, you still have really good low frequency. So it's kind of like a better version of loudness. Yes, much better because you can't blow your speakers up when you turn the volume all the way up. You said five channels. Is yep. the fifth channel have to be a subwoofer? The fifth channel, you can actually assign it to do anything that you want to. So they're full frequency amp, every channel is full frequency. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So if I wanted to use that fifth channel to be the center channel, I could do that. I could, yeah. Oh, that is awesome. I see here that it's cut into two circuit boards. Is this just a front and back or are there two circuit boards inside the amplifier? In order to fit all of this technology into one chassis, the engineers have designed this so that this circuit board actually rests on top of this circuit board. It all fits inside of this chassis. So there's a lot of stuff going on in here you know, from the full-blown DSP to the five-channel amplifier, and to make it all fit, they really ingeniously designed it so that it would stack on top of each other and still have no heat problems as well. What about noise? Because, I mean, components being that close. The engineers have designed it in such a way so that there is no radiated noise and it uses a really good power supply so we don't have any of those issues. Another really cool thing, too, is that on a lot of these newer cars where we have start-stop. Oh, yes, that is a big topic right now. Yeah. And I think at one point, I had com we had talked about that, and you made a comment going, uh, Helix, duh. All of our stuff, all of our processors, even our amplifiers, so even the M5 has start-stop capability, so it will operate down to six volts for five seconds. Okay, that's perfect. So you don't cut out on your music when you come to a stoplight. Now you'd mentioned the power supply. What type of amplifier is it? It's what we call Class HD. So it's a Class D technology, but it uses a very, very high speed chip. So it sounds really good. It's not your traditional Class D technology where you can kind of hear those artifacts. This is a really high speed chip. Sound quality on this is amazing. Something this small, is this like 25 by four and like 50 by one? I mean, what, what's happening here? There's actually two operation modes. We like to run it in high power mode. And in high power mode, it is four channels by 60 watts RMS, and the sub channel is 160 watts at two ohms. Say what? Yep, it's a lot of power in that small chassis. Why do you mention that? We have here is the Mercedes. This has like 500 speakers in it from the factory. What are you using that 160 watts in this to power? The car is really cool, up, and I'm going to tell a story because there's a there, everyone likes a story and the story behind the car. Oh. About a month ago, our team was in Germany. Julian Fisher had to sit in one of their Mercedes that had this amplifier in it with the Mercedes speakers. And we were so impressed with the system. Larry and I talked about, we should have this as a demo. Larry bought this car a week ago. We just feel that this is so impressive that we made the investment to buy the car, to bring it all the way out here from Canada so that we can do these demos. Putting it in this car, let's talk about inputs and outputs on this. What kind of inputs do we have? This has four channels of high level in and also has a digital optical in as well. This guy right here. But one of the really cool things on the four channels of high level input there's a lot of issues out there with integrating into OEM systems we have a kind of secret sauce circuit in here called ADEP and what it does puts a reactive load onto the 
speaker so that you don't have to use any outboard resistors or anything like that that would degrade the signal. And then all the DSPs have digital optical in. So like that new Ultra and of course the Mini DSP. If you're using an adapter like the Helix SDMI 25 or any other ones of these adapters that are out there that integrate in a car to take the factory audio system without messing with the factory head unit, a lot of those have digital optical out and we can take that right into this and that's what we did in this car. So we're using the FTV Zen piece in here. And that's digital toss link out directly into the M5 DSV. And now that'll let you do whatever you want with that, with the outputs of this because you're not bound to having to just like pick four speakers and like pray that you got the right ones. Right, exactly. But even if you did kind of pick four speakers, all of this stuff in our software, we've got an input signal analyzer so you can actually look at the signal electrically come in and figure out if you need full range or if you need to summon together and that's all in the software. But it has four channels of summing then? Yes. It auto EQs? It does have an uh, input EQ so you can adjust that. That's good it enough. It do it automatically. A lot of times the EQ from the car just needs a little bit of love. And just a, just a little push. Yep. Just a little push. We, we can do that on the output. How do you interface with this? We would use a Windows based laptop. You can either use the USB plug, plug it directly into your computer. Sounds like there's an OR coming. OR? Wait there's more. Last year we introduced a Wi-Fi controller as well. Now you can plug in the Wi-Fi controller and it's really cool because you can either connect it to your network in your building yep. or you can do a peer-to-peer -peer network for your computer. It will allow you to tune wirelessly through Wi-Fi. So I can put this back where the factory amplifier is, get it all in the, in, in the boot of the car as it were, and just sit in the front seat, no cables, rock on. Yep, absolutely. The selling point on a lot of these amplifiers is that when you take out the factory amp, because it's so small, you can just use the factory amp's power. Is this one of those amplifiers that you can do that or do you guys recommend connecting it to the battery? So I mentioned earlier that in high power mode, it does 60 by four and 160 by one. There's also a mid power mode. If you're going to integrate directly using say one of the AudioTech Fisher match T harnesses. T harnesses? Yep. All right, we'll get back to that. And you keep it in mid power mode. So it's a little bit less power, but then it doesn't draw as much current. So you can keep it on the factory power wires. If you do run, I'm guessing like an eight gauge right into it, then you can keep it in the high power mode. Yep. Let's go back to those T harness. Tell me more. There's a whole library of T harnesses that Match has. And that's kind of where Match came from is it matches to the car. Whether you're driving a European car, we've got some brand new quad lock connectors now that are what are called MQS, where they're modular. You'd actually take that big quad lock and you can disconnect the speakers right out of it and then just plug those in so you don't have this big quad lock connector behind the radio. A lot of guys actually will either build their own. If we don't have one, you can build your own T harness or just tie right into the factory amplifier. We did one at a dealer last week. We replaced the factory Bose amplifier out of GMC Sierra. Put an amplifier like this in and it's amazing. Factory Bose speakers, factory Bose subwoofer. We just Factory added, Bose speakers, really? And just added better amplifier and gave it a really good tune and it sounded amazing. Moving to the back side of the car, let's take a look at the truck and we get an overview of what's going on in this. They're not using this to power like a sub in the trunk. They have another product for that. This is the match subwoofer PP10 EQ. That's a 10 inch subwoofer in the match line. It's in a sealed enclosure and then the match amplifiers actually sit where the factory amp was back here in the corner. So this little guy here is just like look how small this is. I mean wow. That and her brother is back there. Her brother? Look yeah, at that. there's a two channel version of that amplifier. For those two channels of output. Yeah, there's a two channel one that's a, exactly the same chassis side. That's a 125 watts by two. This same chassis side is 250 watts. That matches this match. I got it. Fire. The two channels of output from the DSP go here, matches up with two channel amp, and now you've got a seven channel DSP system basically in the palm of your hand. Let's go inside the car and you can tell me what's going on in here. All right. What model Mercedes Benz are we talking about here? This is a C43 AMG, brand new. Brand 2020. 2020. 2020. So this had the Brewmeister system in it. Yep. It which sure is did. like super premium. How many speakers were in this from the factory? There's a set of components in the front, so that's four. And then the center channel, five. And then there's actually two eight inch woofers in the floorboard. So that's seven. And then whatever. Components going. in the rear door. So that's 11. Did it have a factory sub in the back too? Or is it just it the ones? It was just, just those. The ones in the and front. then the rear deck surround speakers. Oh, yeah, the little. So that's 13. So we have 13 speakers. So we have 13 channels, but you just told me we only put seven 
basically 7.1 in here. So yeah. what did we keep? We replaced these factory components with the Mercedes, match Mercedes speakers. We replaced the floorboard subwoofers with the match Mercedes floor subwoofers. And then we disconnected the rear doors and uh, replaced the rear surround speakers. So just the, the ones in the far back? The far back. Just yeah. for effect? Right. What about the center channel? The center channel we disconnected. And so when you listen to it, I want you to kind of listen to see how well we can tune the car and not use the center channel and how well the center image because the whole point of that even though it's this really cool car you can do this system in any car right so whether you because most cars a... aren't going to have the cool grill up there for the center channel right but a lot of people still want to try to achieve that center image and we can do that with the dsp well at this point i guess the only thing left to do other than you know the crying is take a listen to it and see how it sounds play some music all right here we go now of course you guys know that you're only going to get snippets of it but i'm going to thoroughly enjoy it so just watch my face So that's 70 watts and 150 a piece for the to, a total power for those two subs in there is 160 yeah it's yeah i'm sorry 100 and i mean that little guy's way the heck back there going through you know the i can't scream through the back seat is that thing even doing anything uh yeah at a really low frequency because yeah, so. i mean the the impact is is truly like wow mm -hmm. like it's the power of the time alignment. When you can align that subwoofer, and then if you've got that reinforcement up in the front, like a lot of cars will do, with either big, nice six and a half, yeah. or, you know, subwoofers in here. But yeah, when you can time align everything we've done using that DSP, everything just oh, it, it just phenomenal. it's like so. I, I want to say capsulating, and it just feels. It's hard to describe, and I know you guys always like ask us, you know, it's, it's like, it's just, I mean, I, w I would like to say it's like you're there, but I don't know where there is, mm -hmm. but there must be here. All right, whatever, yeah. play again. Let's keep going. The center image is insane. And there's no center channel. I know, and I was, I was, I was, I was getting, I always do this just to make sure. And even sometimes when we're tuning a car, I always do that. Ooh, they're turning off the oh. lights. It's okay, we, we do low light, we're good. Yeah. Screw them. Anyways, <laughs> it, this is insane. I mean, dude, you got the amp? It is right here, look at, look at it. I almost lost it. I know, well, you guys are wearing cool little lanyards that are the exact same size. What's the model number on this? That's the M5 DSP Mark II. Where would they find out more information, like if we miss something? Check out our website, msc-america.com, or you can visit Audio Tech Fisher directly at audiotech-fisher.com. Where's Audio Tech Fisher from? They're based in Germany, and that little guy right there is made in Germany. This is made in Germany? That says right on the back. Oh, it does. Yeah, That's look at that. Made. made in Germany. Sweet. And it's not assembled in Germany. It says oh, made, made in, in Germany. Germany. All the DSP product is absolutely 100% made in Germany. This has been one of the most impressive demos I've heard in a really long time. If you would have told me or not told me this was in the car, I would have like, if you just had sit in the car and I would have been like, what's in the trunk? And then if like, I would have, you're foolish. <laughs> this is impressive. So if you guys are looking for a really super small alternative, but you want the ability to do adjustment on your own, that is key. Well, this one allows you to do full custom adjustment and have all the crazy controls you want. The nice thing about Audio Tech Fisher is that you can go on the website and you can download the DSP software and play with it. Absolutely. So I strongly recommend as always, you guys, I tell you, go download the software, play with it, figure out what it can do. You could have retained the center channel with this if you wanted to. We could have. But why? Because this is a one person car and it sounds incredible. And it doesn't sound bad from this side either. Well, Jason, thank you so much for coming on the show and thank you so much for, you know, just allowing us to be partners with you and have fun and that's it. That's all I got. You got anything else? No. Thanks, guys. Thank you guys so much. As we always say, enjoy. Have a great night. We'll see you later next time. See ya. Bye.